you probably learned that the Big Bang threw everything outward in the universe has kind of just been coasting since then, a bit like a really, really, really big explosion that's just slowing down. But that ain't right. The universe isn't just expanding, it's actually speeding up. Something you see is invisible, and it's stepping on the gas, and we have no idea what it is. But we did give it a name. I mean, not me personally. Some giant brain scientists probably did, although their giant brains still can't figure it out anyway. We call it dark energy, and before you picture some sci-fi force field, let me be clear. This is an effect that makes space itself expand faster over time. It's not pushing galaxies through space like wind in their sails. It's somehow making space bigger. <laughs> Imagine dots in a balloon as you inflate it. The dots aren't moving across the surface, but the surface between them is growing. And that is what seems to be happening to everything in the universe right now. And yeah, it's really weird. And here's the thing. Dark energy makes up about 68% of the entire universe. That's more than two-thirds of everything that exists is, uh, well, we don't really know. <laughs> it's, again, weird. And this isn't just some scientists wonder about this shit thing. Dark energy literally decides the fate of everything. Whether the universe ends in ice or fire, whether galaxies drift apart into eternal loneliness or get ripped to shreds, it all comes down to this mysterious phenomenon that we only discovered by accident. And speaking of which, we didn't even know that dark energy, again, 68% of the universe, existed until 1998, when astronomers used exploding stars as cosmic distance markers and realized that something was rather wrong with all their measurements. This discovery was so shocking that it won the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics. We went from thinking we understood the big picture to realizing that we don't understand most of it. Just before we continue with today's episode, if the world ended tomorrow, could you rebuild it? No? Hey, idiot, get this book, and it will help you find out how. The book, The Ultimate Guide to Rebuilding a Civilization, is part encyclopedia, part survival manual, and part illustrated art piece. It's 400 pages of humanity's most clever inventions. Engineering, architecture, astronomy, all packed into one beautifully crafted volume, and it's massive. I'm not a tiny person. This is a very, very large book. It's very thick. And if I open it in any page randomly, blah, 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 let's open it this one. There's going to be a beautiful diagram. Look at that. What is that? Is that? What is that? The multi-tool. I I always called these something else. I called them a, I probably shouldn't say the brand, should I? It's a leather man. It's a leather man, isn't it? Isn't this what this is? It's got, the, everything is beautiful. <laughs> Talk about something else. Ooh, gear and rolling mill. Look at that. Look at every page has beautifully illustrated inventions. Handmade drawings, medieval style layouts, and matte art paper that makes this thing feel like it belongs in a museum. It's built for curious minds, whether you're 12 or 60. And honestly, I've been, <laughs> I say, reading this with my children. They are four and five. But I have been looking at the pictures with them, which is nice. It already raised over $3.2 million on Kickstarter and Indiegogo and became a bestseller for a reason. You don't have to be a history buff to love it. You just have to wonder how we got here and what we'd do if we had to start over. So hit the link in the description below. Use the code CELESTIUM10 at checkout. Get the book just in case civilization needs a reboot. And it's also really beautiful. It's a coffee. It's a just you have this on your coffee table and you just be opening and having a browse. Back to today's episode. The paradoxes that break your brain. So, dark energy is everywhere, quite literally. It fills every cubic meter of space uniformly, including the room that you are sitting in right now. But you can't detect it or feel it in any way. The only way we know it exists is by watching galaxies billions of light years away and what they're up to. So, it's something that is supposedly surrounding you right now, but we only know it's real because we can measure it by looking at stuff that is incomprehensibly far away. Again, it's weird. It's going to come up a lot in today's episode. And the contradictions get worse. The actual energy density of dark energy is almost laughably small. It's about a few hydrogen atoms worth of energy per cubic meter of space. Yet, this pathetically weak energy dominates the entire universe's behavior. How? Well, that's because while the energy in any given spot is tiny, there is just so much empty space to fill that it adds up. It's the ultimate example of quantity over quality. Imagine a single drop of water that seems insignificant until you realize you're talking about an ocean that spans to basically infinity. 
But here's where the physics starts to feel a bit broken. Gravity should be slowing the universe's expansion down. Every bit of matter and energy attracts every other bit. So after the Big Bang's initial push, everything should be gradually decelerating like a ball thrown into the air, eventually falling back down. Instead, we see the opposite. The expansion is accelerated. It's kind of like you threw that ball up and, you know, it just gets faster and faster and goes into space or something. The technical term for this madness is negative pressure, but don't let that fool you into thinking that we understand it. Normal pressure pushes outward like air in a balloon. Negative pressure does something that shouldn't be possible. The more dark energy you have in a region of space, the more it makes that space want to expand, which creates more space for more dark energy to fill, which accelerates the expansion even more. Now, we'll come back to exactly how this works without the maths, but for now, just know that dark energy essentially acts like anti-gravity, but on a cosmic scale. And if that wasn't weird enough, as the universe expands and creates more space, and dark energy's density stays constant, the total amount of dark energy in the universe increases. Note, this isn't a perpetual motion machine, it's just that general relativity doesn't define conservation of energy the same way that your textbook does when you're dealing with the expansion of space-time itself. At this point, you might be wondering if physicists just made all of this up to maybe mess with us or something, bloody physicists. They didn't, we promise, but you are probably just as confused as me. What dark energy isn't, and how we actually know it's there. Okay, so first of all, let's clear up the most common confusion. Dark energy, it's not dark matter. Sure, they both have dark in the name, which is admittedly pretty bad branding, but they're complete opposites. The Dark Knight is also not dark matter, it's a movie. Quite a good movie. Dark matter clumps together like invisible scaffolding, pulling galaxies into shape through normal gravity. It is smooth and uniform everywhere, it never clumps together, and instead of pulling things together, it pushes the expansion of space faster. So, the entire universe is about 5% normal matter, that's every star, planet, and atom, basically everything that you know. It's 27% dark matter, the invisible stuff holding galaxies together, and it's a whopping 68% dark energy, the mysterious force that's tearing everything apart. So basically, we understand less than 5% of our universe. So, how do we know something invisible and undetectable actually exists? Well, we have three cosmic yardsticks that all point to the same weird truth. Now, standard candles, these are something called Type 1A supernovas, stellar explosions that always blow up with the same brightness. It's kind of like a bowl that's always the same brightness. In 1998, two teams of astronomers noticed these supernovae it looked dimmer than they should at their distance, meaning that they were further away than expected. The only explanation, the universe's expansion had accelerated while their light traveled toward us. Standard rulers, these are another thing, and they're patterns called baryon acoustic oscillations. These are basically frozen sound waves from the baby universe that left a characteristic spacing between galaxies, sort of like a cosmic fingerprint that we can measure across different eras. These patterns work like yardsticks for measuring how far space expanded at different times in cosmic history. The cosmic microwave backgrounds and structure growth give us the universe's overall energy budget and show how quickly the cosmic web of galaxies formed, both requiring dark energy to match what we observe. Now, here's where physicists get clever, or maybe they just get desperate. They've boiled dark energy's behavior down to a single number they call W, or omega, which describes its elasticity, or how it responds to the expansion of space. If W equals exactly negative 1, dark energy behaves like Einstein's cosmological constant, basically a built-in pressure of empty space that never changes, like a fundamental property of the vacuum itself. This is the weird but simple option where dark energy is just how space works and that's the end of the story. But if W or omega is anything other than negative 1, or worse, if it changes over time, then we're looking at something oh so much stranger. Maybe gravity itself works differently than Einstein thought. This would be the difference between, hey, the universe is pretty weird, isn't it? And everything you learned in physics class needs to be thrown out. It's oh so wrong. Current measurements suggest omega is frustratingly close to negative one, but not quite precisely negative one, which basically seems to be the universe just trolling physicists. Is it exactly negative one and our measurements are just slightly off, or is it genuinely different, hinting at new physics that would need all those textbooks to be chucked away? 
We're building better telescopes to find out because apparently that's what humans do when the universe confuses us. We just stare at it harder. Kind of like me when I'm trying to understand this concept. The universe is literally disappearing before our eyes. And here is something even weirder. Dark energy is gradually erasing the universe from view. As space expands faster and faster, distant galaxies are sliding beyond our cosmic horizon. That's the ultimate edge of what we can ever see or reach, even with infinite time and technology. These galaxies aren't being destroyed, they are just accelerating away from us so fast that their light is never going to reach us. They're essentially gone forever. In a few hundred billion years, future astronomers will look at a fundamentally lonelier sky. Galaxies that we can photograph today will be gone from view forever. If intelligent life evolves, then they'll have no way to discover the Big Bang, no evidence of cosmic expansion, no clue that trillions of galaxies once decorated the sky. They'll think the universe is just their local galaxy cluster floating in an infinite black void. Dark energy isn't just changing the universe, it's slowly deleting the evidence that the universe exists at all. Before you panic about being torn apart by dark energy, here's the reassurance. It doesn't affect our solar system, our galaxy, or even our local galaxy cluster. Anything held together by gravity, molecular forces, or any other binding stays bound. Dark energy only wins when there's nothing strong enough to resist it. Space grows most between things not tightly held together, like between distant galaxy clusters. Think of it like a really weak force. It could slowly separate scattered leaves on a pond, but it ain't gonna move a boat. So how are we racing to measure this cosmic disappearing act before it's too late? Well, we've built three massive survey projects that are basically taking the universe's baby photos while we still can. DESI, the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, is a mouthful, and it's also capable of creating 3D maps of millions of galaxies, tracing those sound ripples that we talked about earlier, like fossil sound waves from the early universe. Early analysis dropped a potential bombshell. Dark energy might have been weaker in the past, gradually strengthening over cosmic time. If true, this would shatter the rather nice idea of a cosmological constant. But importantly, these hints are tentative. Scientists are basically saying, Maybe we see something weird, but we need way more data before we freak out. Euclid, the European Space Agency's new telescope, just started releasing sweeping maps of billions of galaxies. It's hunting dark energy through weak gravitational lensing, basically using galaxy distortions like a cosmic magnifying glass to map invisible matter and energy. The first images show what they're calling a sparkling cosmic web, the largest structures in the universe. It's both beautiful and terrifying when you realize that dark energy is slowly tearing it apart. Really, really slowly. The Rubin Observatory is now coming online with a camera the size of a small car that's going to repeatedly scan the entire southern sky. It'll catch thousands of supernovae in the act of exploding and detect subtle lensing patterns, turbocharging our dark energy tests. Within a few years, it'll have photographed more of the universe than all previous telescopes combined. Desi, Euclid, and Rubin are our cameras filming from three different angles, each catching details the others might miss. Together, they're trying to answer oh, whether dark energy is constant or evolving, whether the universe's expansion is just weird or about to get a lot weirder. And here's why this matters beyond cosmic fate. The same observations test Einstein's theory of gravity across 11 billion years of cosmic history. So far, general relativity keeps passing every test that we throw at it, but physicists are almost hoping to find a crack, a place where Einstein's equations finally break because that crack might be the doorway to a deeper understanding of reality. Two futures physics can't decide between. Okay, so we're down to two big possibilities for what dark energy actually is, and the difference between them, again, is the difference between eh, the universe is really weird and uh, physics is kind of wrong so far, my dudes. Option one, the cosmological constant. This is the simplest explanation, where empty space just has a tiny built-in push, like a fundamental property of the vacuum itself. In this scenario, dark energy never changes. The constant equals exactly negative one forever, and the universe's acceleration continues steadily until the cosmos ends in a cold, empty whisper trillions of years from now. It's clean, it's minimal, and it requires no new physics beyond accepting that space itself just has this bizarre property. So I guess that's a big win for the Stone Cold Dead universe. Brilliant. Option two 
is something's changing. Maybe dark energy is a new field that can evolve over time, or maybe gravity itself works differently than Einstein predicted on cosmic scales. In either case, the constant wouldn't equal negative one, or worse, it might change over time. This would mean the universe's future is not set. Acceleration could speed up, slow down, reverse, or do something we haven't even imagined yet. Not so simple as the Stone Cold Dead universe, is it? Now, here's why option one, the cosmological constant, is problematic. When quantum physicists try to calculate how much vacuum energy there should be based on quantum mechanics, they get a number that's wrong by somewhere between 60 and 120 orders of magnitude. That's not just wrong, it's often called the worst prediction in the history of physics. To put this catastrophe in human terms, it's like trying to weigh a feather and your scale telling you that it weighs more than, I don't know, the entire observable universe? We're not talking about being off by double or triple, we're talking about being off by one followed by 60 zeros. So, is dark energy actually changing, potentially saving us from this theoretical nightmare? Desi's first multi-year results sent ripples through the physics community with hints, and we do stress here, hints that dark energy might have been weaker in the past. News outlets ran with headlines about evolving dark energy, but scientists are pumping the brakes real hard on this one. There are interesting whispers in the data, but there are definitely not verdicts. And this is exactly why we're throwing everything we've got at the problem. Euclid and Rubin Observatory are designed to nail down these measurements, with error bars so tight they'll either confirm the cosmological constant or blow it apart. NASA's Roman Space Telescope, launching around 2027, will join the hunt with precision that makes today's measurements look like my son's finger paintings, which are wonderful, Remus. You're a future Rembrandt. And then there is the Hubble tension, a completely separate headache that might be related. Our two best methods for measuring the universe's current expansion rate disagree significantly. Measurements using the cosmic microwave background give us about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Measurements using local supernovae and other nearby objects give us about 73. That might not sound like much, but it is, it just is, let's leave it at that, our brains are already melted enough. But the James Webb Space Telescope just made this rather worse by confirming the higher local value with beautiful precision. This isn't just measurement error anymore, it's the universe telling us something is wrong with our picture. Maybe dark energy isn't constant, maybe there's new physics we're missing, maybe the universe just enjoys watching physicists suffer. The frustrating truth is that after 25 years of knowing dark energy exists, we are still at the what the fuck is this stage. Every measurement brings us closer to an answer, but that answer might be everything you thought you knew is wrong. Least satisfying YouTube video you ever watched? Maybe, but thanks for watching.